Hey there, it's Nicole Frost of Frost Yarns. So this is definitely one of the sloppiest videos you're about to see um, because I had the idea at the moment it was happening. Short story long, I have owned three different Strouch Carters. I got my first one in the beginning of 2009 and it was a finest. I got my second one, a double wide mad batter hand crank and my third strouch is my motorized that I got in 2017 and I probably put 20 hours on that carter a week and sometimes as much as 50. Uh, pretty much every week up until May of this year when um, my carter was really acting up. Um, when I would feed fiber in, it would slow and it would just squeal. And if you go to any of my Instagram videos under the hashtag frost yarn bat tutorial that are recent in this year that don't have music over them, you can hear the squeaking, squealing. So um, I don't know if any of you know this, but Strouch used to be owned by a man named Otto Strouch. And he sold the company, I believe, last year to a man named Mike Gallagher and tragically... Um, Mike ended up dying of a very aggressive form of cancer last year, and I have the blog post from Strouch in the description if you want to read about who he was as a person and, you know, um, the legacy that he left behind. Unfortunately, I had been sending videos to the new people who were running Strouch, and I didn't get any, um help or information back on what I could possibly do to fix my carter. And since it's a highly, highly specialized technical piece of equipment that I just can't take anywhere, I brought it to my dad, who is a mechanical engineer, and he works mostly in LASIK eye surgery, and he makes those machines that take cataracts out of people's eyes. So I'm incredibly fortunate that he is also a pro woodworker for fun and has a shit ton of materials. So the video you're about to see is me in the moment realizing, holy shit, I should film this because if this ever happens to someone else who happens to have a Carter by Strouch and they don't have $400 to ship it there and have it come back, maybe not... Um, for months or at all, then this is for you. And I'm sorry about the quality. I did not plan on filming all of this when I went into it. I just showed up with my carter and my dad started fixing it. And I realized, oh my God, there's a woman who just messaged me about this exact thing, asking me what was wrong with her carter. And now I can film this and I was filming it sort of for her. And then I realized I need to put it on YouTube. So I apologize for the quality, but if your carter has issues, most of them that could be addressed are addressed in this. So without further ado, here we go. What's going on with it? The bushings just needed lubrication. What kind of lubrication? Well, I just put WD-40 And how do you get to the bushings? That's why I mark this off here and you mark it off there. Then you pop off these screws and you can pull this off. That way you can clean all the felt and the crack that's binding up okay. in here off. Then I spray the lubricant on the inside of the, of the bushing and cleaned up the washers and the axle and put it back together. But that's why I put these marks on here because that makes the alignment okay. back and forth here. So how often do you think this needs to be done? Uh, once a year. Maybe. Is there any... We use it every day. I do it once a year. Any, any, but now that you've got it down, I just take the stuff and just, you just spray it. You see how dirty it is? All the black that's coming out of there? Yeah. It's just all dirt because the bushing is running dry. They didn't have any lube in it. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm using the WD-40 to flush the crap out of it. But. Got it. And that's not going to get into the fiber. Because my concern would be if I got that anywhere on the drum, I'd never get it the fuck off and all well, my fiber would be... No, yes, you would. <laughs> you just put alcohol in. Yeah. There are those of us that have no mechanical abilities and don't know that. Yeah. And that I'd be one of them. So we're going to take that, whatever the fuck that is, what do you call that? A nut? It's a half inch bolt. Okay, what kind of... It takes a half inch wrench. It's okay. a quarter It's a quarter twenty screw, or a quarter twenty bolt. It okay. just uses a half inch wrench. So marking it first is allowing you to put it exactly back yeah, where it needs to go. Don't, otherwise you don't know what the alignment is. Oh, and you only do one at a time so you don't end up being too... So okay. you don't get it knocking all out of whack. It's right, right, right. Okay. So if you wanted to change the distance between the big drum and the little drum, you would take these off and move it? If you wanted to... Get, put more clearance between more the big... More clearance, yeah. Okay. Good to know. I don't. I like my clearance, but if someone in the future... Well, we'll, we'll see how we, 
my gut feeling is the way that these are built is he indicates them in, lock clamps them down, and he does something with this, the threaded inserts that he buries into the wood down there so it keys into the width of this aluminum block, and that way it can't shift this way. Oh, that's why but it's so it's stable. it's slotted so that you can adjust the, 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 the gap. Okay. But if you, I don't know why you, uh, is it, if it was intended to have the gap be adjustable, then there would have been adjusters on here in order to move it in and out. But it would have had to come in and out parallel, so it would have had to have a much more accurate mechanism to do that than this. Got it. So you think that the way that he sends them out, that's the that you need to leave them there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. I mean, I like the way. I don't think you should mess with this. This is set. I mean, I I don't know. You need to tell me if you if a bigger or narrower. Gap. If I had a bigger gap, it would go on to this drum easier but it wouldn't be carded as finely and that would only be for if you had really thick fleece that you wanted to go on to the drum without losing the lock texture and that's i paint my locks on the back of the drum to keep the texture okay so i just want to make sure this is we should probably get a get a ratchet and do this but is there anything else that you think that needs to be a, like this chain. Is this ever going to be something I need to oil? Is this ever going to be something I need to replace? And if I do need to replace it, do you know where to get a chain it like this? It doesn't run with enough tension to, it'll like, this is going to last a lifetime. Okay. But I just oil the chain anyways. How do you oil the chain? With this. I right. know, but do you just spray I it just on? I spray it on there when So it's run it so and spray it? Okay. Yeah, you know, when we get done with this, you're going to have to turn it upside down and wipe off anything that got down. Okay. On the inside. Luckily, um, any fiber that falls underneath the drum is trash fiber to me, so I don't care if there's fiber bits that have WD-40 on them because they will be trash anyway. And then, is there any way to get that chain off? Oh, this is the way you get the chain off. Oh, wow. That is dirty as fuck. <gasps> yeah. Ew. And you see how black it is? Yeah. It's called an oil light bushing, and it's usually, it's impregnated with a certain amount of lubricant, but you've been running it Years. They never lubricated it. Yes. It's running dry. And, and when they that's run dry, the scream. What it does is it takes material off of this shaft and it starts to bury it into the oil light. This okay. is called an oil light bushing. Okay. O I L I T E? O I, yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. So, you know, that's why you, I want to get all the crap off of here. Because I sometimes get fiber into that chain and it's really hard to get it off. So is it possible to take this chain off or is that just like a total bitch and I need to use tweezers to get the fiber off the chain? See right here, you got fiber on the other side of the chain. Well then if you want to, if, then we'd be pulling the other saddle bearing off of here. No, 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 we're good. I just wanted to know if it's possible. Well, yes it is be, because you, as long as you mark this out, you can get the alignment back where you need it. Okay. If you okay. take this off, now you're free to, you know, it's got right, slack right. in there now. Okay. I mean, I mean, I need to look at the bottom side of it. I haven't seen the underside of how this thing does well, whatever it's doing down here. Once you're done putting that back on, we're going to flip it over because I want to talk about the motor. Okay. Tell me about what you just said. This is a standard off-the-shelf oil light bushing you can buy from anybody who sells bearings. So if yours is completely burned out because you've been running it too long without lube, what do you do? You press it out. But you go somewhere and have them press it out. Where do you go? Do, no, custom machinist? Do just do it in my garage. But not everybody has a fucking press for metal, Dad. <laughs> you don't need a press. You just need a drift pin that's almost as big as this outside diameter that can pile it on the inside of that hole. You put it in a, in a bench vise, and then you just take a hammer and you knock it out. Okay. So what do people do who don't have a hammer, who don't have a bench vise, and all of what you just said means fucking nothing? <laughs> Do is there some? Can you go to a machinist, bring that part, and say yeah, I need yeah. one of these? And by the time you got done looking at what they did, you'd wish you'd done it yourself instead of giving in fifty bucks to do it for you. Okay. This is not rocket science. This is really, really simple. Anybody, any of these person's husband ought to be able to do. Dude, that. you're a fucking mechanical engineer. <laughs> we make yarn. You're overestimating the general public's ability to do shit like this. Okay. Do I have to take the, can I just like set a reminder in my phone every six months, hit it with WD-40 and be good for life? Or do I have to take, do this whole, take it off and well, spray it on the inside? What would, would have been a smart thing to do 
is if they drilled and tapped a hole down here above the center line of the axle and put a zerk fitting in it, then you could take a little bit of grease and, oh, and grease this bearing instead of doing this with WD-40 and making a sloppy mess. Got it. Is that I would something... be putting grease on here right now if I had any. If I... Is that something you can retrofit your carter to do? Sure. Huh. You just need to know what size drill and what size thread. Yeah, you need to be able to drill a hole, and you have to drill a hole through the bushing. Okay. So that when you put the zerk fitting in here and you pump grease in it, it goes in and it spreads around the inner diameter of the, uh, of the bearing. Got it. That's all there is to it. Gear motor. This is a gear motor? Yeah. You can. This is the gear head. That's the motor. Okay. So in the case of someone who owns one of these carters and this, oh Jesus, this thing dies, is this something you can just get from the store? Or is this custom made for this particular? Anybody who sells bearings and electric motors will sell gear motors. You can, the label's right there. It'll tell you the manufacturer. You can look the manufacturer up and you can probably buy this motor on Amazon. And what about this complicated mess of wires right here? <clears throat> There's nothing complicated about it. Are you fucking kidding? There's a red one and a white one. I don't know if it's going to turn into a bomb if I click the wrong one. You a power neutral and a ground. And this is a, a fuse in case this overloads. There's a fuse in here. This is a fuse breaker so that you don't overamp the motor and blow it out. That's why that's there. I I just thought it was for pressing it randomly while you're carting. I had no what idea what that, that... What, what do you mean? What I do you mean? Nothing happens if you press it. <laughs> I have nothing... Look. Huh. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Just maybe it's not a fuse. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. So this whole gnarly like rat's nest of wires back here. If That's you... very clean wiring, actually. No, well, it's not a rat's nest. Okay. To the uninitiated who has not been building complicated machines for 50 fucking years, this looks like a bomb. This doesn't, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at here, but there are people. Because the problem is people well, have been is trying. very well done. I'm not, yeah, I, I agree. I love this Carter. I've owned three of them. I will probably never card on anything else other than this. But if I didn't have you, I would definitely in a hundred years not be able to figure out what all is going on, how to repair it, how to replace it. So I want to help my fellow fiber artists who have something from this brand that can no longer get it maintained or repaired like give them a little bit of insight on what they need to do and where they need to go. Because some of us have been just replacing this with a different brand and been unhappy about it. What's an idler? It's what keeps the tension on your chain. Oh, so do you think, what do you, what happens? Can you just replace this with bike chain or no? Because it looks like that's a... all it is is bike chain. Okay, it is a bike chain. So, is how do you know if one of these little gear thingies is is broken? Well, we're gonna just we're gonna find over. out. Okay. That's all. That. And this is crap up too. How do you know what I like? I look at this and I don't see. Oh, this one's broken, and this needs to be replaced, and this isn't working correctly. All I know is the constellation of problems has caused it to no longer work in the way that it did. Like, how can you, as someone who's not a, f a woodworker, figure out, or do you just need to take it to your local handy mechanical man, woman, or lizard folk pyromancer? I guess. Okay. So if I turn the turnbuckle in clockwise, I should pull this in. See how much more tension that makes. How do you know how much tension it needs to run optimally? Depends on how much noise it makes. Got it. So the noisier it is, it's not in alignment. Well, I don't know about that. You know, the further that this goes this way, the tighter the chain is, you see. Got it. But the spring is what pulls this back in order to create the tension and right now it just fell off so and I don't think it's tightened up. Got it so we're going to tighten that up. Let me just put a little bit of this. Yeah 
And this one's got junk in it too. But... Fiber. Yeah, it turns out these things just eat fiber in all the gears and parts. That's most of it. No, it's not hurt anything. No. And what do you call that thing again? It's an idler. An idler, okay. It, it self-tensions the chain because of the spring. Got it. And again, that spring, you could just bring it to a parts store and uh, they're going to be able to match it for you. It's not like custom made for this carter. It's parts out of... You just measure the spring and that's in what's called an extension spring. Okay. Because it has loops on the end and a tight coil. And the further you pull it apart, the more tension it makes. Okay. Something that you could get out of McMaster Car. McMaster? McMaster Car. It's a supply catalog. It's online. You just go McMasterCar.com. You can buy these bushings. You can buy gears. You can buy chain. You can buy these motors. You could get it all out of McMaster Car if you really wanted to. Really? Yeah. This industrial supply is one of the biggest ones in the United States. They've been around for since the 70s at least. They're all online. I buy a lot of hardware from them. Okay. Stuff that I need. Now, any of these wires in this housing, if something happens where for whatever reason the motor's no longer working, to replace the motor and the wires, they're going to send it to you with all the wires, right? They're not just going to, you don't have to buy these wires separately somewhere? It'll, this, these wires will be coming out of it. Okay. The power one, the wire will be out of it and you're going to cut and trim everything to match. Got it. Okay. And so you just, you just keep your previous one. and your switch your rheostat and your, you know, power thingy and whatever. The fuck is a rheostat? This is what, the speed controller, it's a rheostat. Oh, I thought, you know, calling it a speed controller is more clear, but that's but just me. <laughs> you know, a rheostat is anything that regulates power and just like a light switch has a rheostat on it to make it brighter or dimmer. Got it. And do you hear that? No squeak, no skip, runs like the day I fucking bought it. So there you are. Moment of truth. Does the motor drag like it used to when I try to run something through? Listen for the motor. Like butter. This is so good. Oh my god. <laughs>